Beyond their rich cultural heritage, Native Americans possessed an innate genius for innovation, crafting tools and techniques that not only ensured their survival, but also shaped the course of history. You might be surprised to learn that many of these inventions continue to enrich our lives today, used by people worldwide. In this captivating episode, we will unveil the top 10 Native American inventions that have stood the test of time and are integral to our modern world. Join us as we delve into the fascinating stories behind these creations, from the artistry of crafting canoes to the practicality of snow goggles and so much more. But our exploration won't stop at the inventions themselves. We'll also celebrate the remarkable communities that nurtured these innovations and discover how they have evolved over the ages. Before we dive into this intriguing journey, do us a favor, show your support by liking this video and subscribing to our channel. By doing so, you'll ensure you never miss a glimpse of Native American history come alive. Now, without further ado, let's unveil the first invention on our extraordinary list. Number one, the Three Sisters Farming Method. One major thing that made indigenous Native Americans stand out from other races was their excellent agricultural skill. They deliberately planted and produced the best crops, especially corn, which was the bane of their agricultural economy. To ensure quality food production, their ingenuity led them to invent the Three Sisters Farming Method, which is very much practiced to date. According to archaeologists, this approach, developed by various Native American tribes, most notably the Iroquois and the Cherokee, was first used around 1070 AD. The Three Sisters Method involves establishing a symbiotic or, simply put, beneficial relationship by planting three different plants together. These three essential crops, which include corn, beans, and squash, utilize each other's benefits and, in turn, thrive well, leaving the natives with a bumper harvest. This agricultural method still holds valuable lessons for modern farming. Women select the best fields based on soil quality and carefully plant corn seeds. The corn's sturdy stalks were intended to support the climbing bean vines, eliminating the need for trellises or additional structures. After two or three weeks, they strategically placed bean seeds between the corn stalks. Beans, which are natural climbers, wend their way up the corn stalks. This vertical growth not only maximizes space utilization, but also fixes nitrogen in the soil through a mutually beneficial relationship with nitrogen-fixing bacteria in their root nodules. This nitrogen enrichment enhances the soil's fertility, benefiting all three crops. The third plant, squash, is planted between rows to utilize its broad leaves as a dense ground cover that shades the soil beneath, preventing weed growth and reducing moisture evaporation. The Three Sisters system naturally deters pests through the garden's physical structure and the plant's chemical composition. This minimizes the need for chemical pesticides, contributing to a healthier ecosystem. Number two, canoes. In addition to their agricultural skills, Native Americans were known for their sophisticated skill in navigating water bodies. To aid easy transportation across rivers and fish seamlessly, they came up with the brilliant idea of building a wooden structure to help them stay afloat on water. This innovation birthed the canoe from the word kinu, meaning dugout. This dugout canoe was the earliest form of water transportation developed along the Pacific Northwest coast by tribes such as the Haida, Salish, and Tlingit. These canoes were crafted by hollowing out large cedar logs. The sturdy and seaworthy nature of dugout canoes made them suitable for coastal and open water navigation. In addition to transportation, they were also used for fishing and trading. To create this boat, the native people had a way of cutting down trees. They started a small fire at the bottom of a chosen tree and kept it burning until it fell over. They did this multiple times to make the tree shorter. Then, they used sticky substances like rosin and gum to light a fire inside the tree and scraped out the burned parts with seashells. They kept doing this until there was enough space inside the tree for people to sit. Overall, it was a lot of hard work and took a long time. The Inuit and Yupik people of the Arctic regions are credited with the invention of the kayak. These small, narrow watercraft were traditionally constructed from animal skins stretched over a wooden frame. Kayaks were designed to hunt seals and other marine mammals in icy waters. The design allowed for exceptional maneuverability and efficiency, 
making them a precursor to modern recreational kayaks for leisure and sporting events. Canoes have left an indelible mark on modern watercraft design. Today's kayaks, canoes, and even some motorized boats draw inspiration from the shape and construction methods of Native American canoes. The knowledge of canoe building has been preserved and passed down through generations. Number 3. Dream Catchers Dream Catchers have their origins in the Ojibwe or Chippewa tribe, a Native American group that primarily inhabited the northern regions of what is now the United States and Canada. These intricate and symbolic objects were traditionally crafted by hand and held a special place in Ojibwe culture. A typical dream catcher consists of a circular frame, often made from willow or other flexible branches, forming a hoop. A woven net is created inside the hoop, resembling a spider's web. This web is meant to capture negative dreams or energy, while allowing positive dreams to pass through. Feathers, beads, and other decorative elements are often attached to the bottom of the hoop. The Ojibwe people believe that dream catchers had the power to protect the sleeper from harmful dreams. According to their beliefs, dream catchers would act as a filter for dreams when hung near the bed or sleeping area. The web would trap bad dreams, preventing them from reaching the dreamer. Nowadays, dream catchers are often used for purposes beyond their traditional role as dream filters. They have become iconic decorative items, adorning homes, cars, and clothing. They are also commonly given as gifts, especially to mark significant life events or to bring positive energy into a space. Number 4. Chewing Gum While chewing gum is not solely attributed to Native American invention, it's worth mentioning that indigenous cultures in the Americas significantly influenced its popularity and use to date. The Mayans and Aztecs of Mesoamerica were among the first to use chicle, a natural latex derived from the sapodilla tree. Chicle was chewed for its pleasant flavor and the potential dental benefits it offered. Many Native American tribes had their chewing gum traditions. They would use various plant resins and sap, often mixing them with natural sweeteners like honey or maple sap to create a chewable substance. For example, the Apache people used resin from the juniper tree. The use of chicle by indigenous cultures caught the attention of European explorers. In the late 19th century, Chickle became an essential ingredient in the development of commercial chewing gum. Thomas Adams, an American inventor, is often credited with creating the first commercially successful chewing gum using chickle in the 1870s. This paved the way for the emergence of iconic chewing gum brands like Wrigley's and Chicklets. These brands contributed to the global popularity of chewing gum as a recreational activity and a breath freshener. Today, chewing gum is widely available in various flavors and forms from sticks and pellets to bubble gum. Number 5. Moccasins Moccasin derives from the Algonquian word moccasin, which means shoe or footwear. This footwear has been worn by Native American people for thousands of years, with some archaeological evidence dating moccasins back to as early as 3,500 years ago. Moccasins are typically made from soft, supple leather or animal hides, which offer durability and flexibility. The choice of materials often depends on what is locally available, such as deer, moose, buffalo, or other hides. They are then sewn together with plant fibers, creating strong and flexible seams. Some tribes used beadwork or decorative stitching to decorate their moccasins. These shoes often have a soft, soleless bottom or a thin leather sole, which allows the wearer to feel the ground beneath them. This design provides a more natural connection to the earth. Today, Moccasins are celebrated for their comfort and distinctive style. Many fashion enthusiasts worldwide wear moccasins as casual or even semi-formal footwear. They are available in various styles, including low-cut slip-ons, ankle-high boots, and knee-high boots, often made from various materials, including suede and leather. One of the primary reasons moccasins remain popular today is their comfort. The soft, flexible soles make them a comfortable choice for everyday wear and are often chosen for lounging around the house or running errands. Some modern moccasins feature cushioned insoles for added comfort. Number 6. Snow Goggles Predecessors of today's popular sunglasses, snow goggles were a crucial invention by indigenous peoples inhabiting the Arctic and sub-Arctic regions, including the Inuit, Yupik, 
and other Native American groups. These innovative eyewear items were designed not only for protection from the blinding glare of snow, but also to safeguard against the harmful effects of intense UV radiation on the eyes. This concern remains relevant to date. The construction of snow goggles was remarkably effective. They featured narrow slits carved into a piece of bone or wood. This design allowed for a narrow field of vision, mimicking squinting eyes, which prevented the harsh sunlight from blinding the wearer. The materials used were selected for their insulating properties, protecting against the biting cold. Additionally, the small slits helped to trap warm air close to the eyes, reducing the risk of frostbite. Number 7. Mouthwash The Native Americans weren't originally inventors of mouthwash. Every tribe and continent had their methods of maintaining adequate oral hygiene. However, the natives' method of mouth cleansing stood out. One popular herb used by the natives is known as the gold thread, or yellow root. It is a perennial herb native to North America, particularly the eastern United States and Canada. What makes this herb so unique? Gold thread contains a compound called berberine, which possesses powerful antimicrobial properties. Berberine has been shown to inhibit the growth of various bacteria, including those responsible for dental plaque and gum disease. Native Americans recognized these properties and utilized gold thread as an herbal remedy for maintaining oral health. Today, while modern mouthwash formulations are more sophisticated and convenient, they owe a debt of gratitude to the Native American cultures that took it upon themselves to explore the benefits of natural ingredients for oral care. Number 8. Syringes While the invention of the syringe is often attributed to Alexander Wood, a Scottish physician, in the mid-19th century, it's important to recognize that Native American cultures had their versions of syringes long before this time. It wouldn't just be considered what you might call sterile. Due to the type of materials used, Native Americans, particularly the Eastern Woodlands tribes, crafted syringes from natural materials like animal bones and hollowed out bird bones with an end sharpened to a point. This pointed end allowed for the precise delivery of fluids. A plunger, often made from a pliable material like a piece of animal intestine or leather, was used to create suction and expel the liquid. Native American healers depended heavily on various herbal remedies and concoctions, and the syringe facilitated their precise administration. Furthermore, they were instrumental in procedures such as wound irrigation, abscess drainage, and other forms of localized treatment. Today, Syringes are an indispensable tool in healthcare for administering medications, vaccinations, and performing various medical procedures. This evolution from the traditional Native American syringes to the sophisticated sterile syringes of modern medicine demonstrates how ancient knowledge has contributed to the progress of healthcare practices worldwide. Number 9. Bunk Beds Yes, the bunk beds you see today result from the ingenuity of indigenous Native American tribes. Plains tribes, including the Lakota Sioux, Cheyenne, and Arapaho, often lived in teepees. These teepees were relatively small living spaces, and accommodating multiple family members required efficient use of the available space. Bunk beds were created to aid space optimization, allowing for more sleeping areas without compromising the teepees' floor space. As European settlers encountered Native American tribes and their way of life, they observed the efficiency of bunk beds and the benefits of vertical sleeping arrangements. This influence gradually entered Western culture, where bunk beds became a popular solution for maximizing space in cramped quarters, such as military barracks and children's bedrooms. Number 10. Pain Relievers Last but not least, it is a revolutionary innovation in medicine. This began with the discovery of the willow tree by Native Americans alongside its health benefits. Willow bark contains salicin, which is a natural precursor to aspirin. Tribes like the Cherokee and Chippewa brewed willow bark tea to reduce fever and alleviate pain. The Iroquois utilized this plant for treating intense sore throat and stomach pain. This practice laid the foundation for developing the modern aspirin you see and use. That's a wrap on the 10 Native American inventions commonly used today. Which of these inventions do you find fascinating? Let us know in the comment section below. Also, don't hesitate to like and subscribe to this channel 
if you're yet to do so. Thank you for staying till the end. Until next time.